Hello, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to deploy a multi node Kubernetes cluster with KOS. In the last video, we saw how to deploy a single node Kubernetes cluster where the single node acted both as a control plane as well as a worker node. And we downloaded KOS binary, which is a very, which is a single binary using which you can bootstrap a Kubernetes cluster, a single node cluster. But now we're going to see how we can make use of a binary. A tool a script called KOS CTL to deploy a multi-node KOS cluster. Let me bring up the documentation. If I go to docs, install quick start guide. So that's the one we followed for the last video. And this time I'm going to use install using KOS CTL page. So basically I'm going to download KOS CTL script or binary to my local machine. And I'm going to spin up a few virtual machines. And then using KOS CTL, I'm going to deploy a multi-node Kubernetes cluster. So in order to do that, I need to make sure my host machine, I can SSH to these individual virtual machines without having to type in the password. So I need to set up the SSH passwordless login first so that KOS CTL script can connect to each of these nodes and set up Kubernetes cluster on them. All right, so first thing first, I'm gonna git clone my Vagrant repository, which is where I keep all my Vagrant templates. So if I go to Vagrant and then to Vagrant files and then to Ubuntu 20, so that's the Vagrant file we're gonna use for this video. And if I edit that file, sorry, not that. Right, so we have generic Ubuntu 20.04 image. I'm going to spin up two virtual machines and I can either use VirtualBox as the provider or LibVirt as the provider. For this video, I'm gonna use VirtualBox, but if you want to use LibVirt, I personally use LibVirt, but as most of you guys are using VirtualBox, I'm gonna use VirtualBox provider for this video anyway. And we have this uh, private network 172.16.16.101 for the first node, 102 for the second node, 103 for the third node and so on. And I've given one gig of memory and one CPU to all the nodes. So that's it. And I'm going to bring this up by typing Vagrant up. Vagrant up by default, it uses the VirtualBox provider. But if you want to use LibVirt provider, use Vagrant up minus minus provider equals libvirt. All right, so it's going to take a few minutes. I'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's done. Right, we have our two virtual machines if I do Vagrant status now. So I'm going to use Ubuntu VM1 as the control plane master node and Ubuntu VM2 as the worker node. And now I need to set up the SSH passwordless login. So for that, I need to create an SSH key pair and copy the public key to these two machines. I have explained that in my previous video, but anyway, I'm going to redo that. SSH keygen minus T RSA type is RSA number of bits is 2048 and I'm specifying the file under dot SSH ID underscore RSA underscore KOS empty pause phrase all right so that's done and if I do LS minus L and we have the private key and the public key and I need to copy this public key to those two virtual machines and there is a handy command SSH copy ID and I'm copying the public key but I'm so in order to SSH for the first time I'm using this uh, minus I to use to specify that I want to use this private key so that it knows which public key to copy to the target machine all right so 172.16.16.101 is Ubuntu VM1 let's do that and the password is admin that's done let's do the same for the second machine password is admin Right, so now I should be able to log in to these two machines without typing in the password, but specifying the private key. So SSH minus I, so that's the private key root at Ubuntu VM1 and I can log in and let's do the same for 102, quickly verify and it's all working good. So the password for this uh, virtual machine is admin and if you look at the bootstrap script, so that's where I'm setting the password. So once Vagrant provisions the virtual machine, I run this bootstrap script to enable password authentication, to enable root login, and also to update the root password in case you're wondering what's the password for these two virtual machines for the root account. All right, so that's done. And now if I go back to the documentation, uh, the first step is to download KOS CTL. Install KOS CTL tool. So there's a link to GitHub repository where you can download the binary release. And 
KOS CTL release page. The latest release as of recording this video is 0 0.9.0. .0. So there's uh, the binary for Linux x64, there's one for Mac and one for Windows. So I'm going to copy the one for Linux. Let's say wget downloading that as KOS CTL. All right, so we have KOS CTL. I'm going to change mod, set the executable permission and move KOS CTL to use the local bin. And if I do which KOS CTL, I have KOS CTL. I can do KOS CTL version, which is 0.9.0. .0. That's exactly what we downloaded. So we have our binary. So we have this KOS CTL binary and the prerequisites are just the KOS CTL binary and the system requirements. So all the machines, uh, Ubuntu VM1, Ubuntu VM2 in our case, it needs to meet the system requirements. So as we saw in the previous video, hardware wise, if it's a controller node, go for one gig of uh, one CPU and one gig of memory uh, as a minimum. And if it's a worker node, one CPU, CPU and half a gig of memory but in my case all the machines have same resources one CPU and one gig of memory so nothing to worry about and I've got plenty of storage so we've gone through the system requirements we've downloaded the KOS CTL till the next thing is to do a KOS CTL init command that will generate a default cluster configuration which we can then apply using KOS CTL apply command passing in the configuration file okay so let's do that KOS CTL init and redirect that to a temporary file kysctl.yaml and now if you take a look at kysctl so that's the sample file created for us and I'm going to modify this so you can see some options here what version of KOS you want to deploy so at the moment it's 1.21.2 and that's the name of the cluster and we've got the host specification here so we've got two hosts here connecting through SSH and the address I'm going to change the address now so my first machine is 172.16.16.101 user root I'm logging in as user root on port 22 using my private key which is home venkatan.ssh id underscore rc underscore kys and the role of this machine is going to be controller i want this machine to be a master node and the second machine the ip address is 172.16.16.102 user root or 22 key path again kos role is going to be worker so that's all we need there is one problem with this approach because i'm using virtualbox you already know that it comes with a default eth0 interface let me log in to one of those machines and if I do IP address show so there's this ETH0 and ETH1 so that's the private network ETH1 is the uh, private network that I added through my vagrant file 172.16.16.102 so that's the address that's the interface we want to use for our Kubernetes cluster so the nodes needs to communicate using these interfaces and this interface is used by vagrant when you do vagrant SSH and things like that it's basically a NAT interface and all the traffic in the end goes through this interface because that's the NAT interface but we want to use ETH1. KOS CTL by default uses the first interface ETH0 so it's not going to work. Let me show you what happens. Let me exit out of it and also log into uh, the other machine and do IP address show. If you look at the ETH0 interface of both these machines it's always going to be 10.0.2.15 the same IP address so anyway it's not going to work if we use the first interface. So there must be some way to specify which interface we want to use for our Kubernetes cluster. So let's go by this. Let's say we have this plain simple KOS CTL cluster configuration that we want to use. All right. So the way to apply this is KOS CTL apply pass minus minus config option and then the configuration file that you want to use. Once you do that, it gets connected. The KOS CTL from my local host, from my host machine connects to these two virtual machines. It says connection successful and then it finds out that I'm running Ubuntu 2004 LTS on those two virtual machines. It prepares the hosts, it gathers some facts about the host and you can see here it has discovered ETH0 as the private interface and it's going to use this IP address 10.0.2.15 for all the internal communication and basically to set up the API server and everything. As you can see here, it's 101. So that's Ubuntu VM 1. And it's going to set up API server because you've specified the role controller for that machine. And then it has downloaded the KOS binary, which we did in the last video. We 
downloaded the KOS binary ourselves, configure KOS, initialize the KOS cluster, and then it brings up the KOS service. And then now it has gone to setting up the worker node. So 172.16.16.101, so that's the master node. It generated the token that the worker node has to use to join to the cluster. So it starts the service, it waits for the node to become ready. The node will become ready once it uses the join token to connect to the cluster, but it's never gonna happen. That's because the cluster has been initialized with 100215 ETH0 as the interface and it's never going to work and I've tried that it's going to be stuck here forever so I'm going to exit out of it. So now we need to specify ETH1 as the interface that we want to use in our Kubernetes cluster right and there's way we can do that but before that I need to clean up the mess that I've done. So KOS CTL apply will do lots of things in, in your virtual machine. It downloads the, uh, the KOS binary, it creates configuration files, it pops certain directories and so on IP tables and everything to start clean I'm going to reset it and there's a command KOS CTL reset and you need to pass in the same configuration so that it knows the configuration file is the one that contains all the host information right so when you do KOS CTL reset it needs to know which machines to connect to to do these operations so that that's why you need to pass the same configuration file so if I press enter it's asking for the confirmation connects to the host and then it also resets the service stops the services and basically runs resets everything all right the command completed and now i'm going to edit the cluster configuration file and specify for each host i'm going to add an extra option saying private interface is eth1 and use the same for the second host as well save and now i can do kos ctl apply command again and this time it should go through fine right the command completed it took about less than two minutes and now we've got a command to run in order to generate a cube config file so kos ctl cube config is the command so if I just run the command, it's going to spit out the cube config file. But even now, you have to pass in the configuration file. KOS CTL cube config and pass in the same cube config, sorry, the cluster configuration file. And if I just press enter, you will see the cube config file. And what we can do is we can redirect this to, but first I need to make this dot cube directory under my home directory. And then I run KOS CTL cube config and then redirect that to dot cube slash config. And now I should be able to interact with the cluster as usual, cube CTL cluster info. So that's our cluster cube CTL get nodes and you would see just the worker node and not the control plane node. I don't know why, but that's the case. KubeCTL get pods dash A. Yep, code DNS, everything is running fine. So usually you would see the scheduler manager, controller manager, cube proxy, and the API server, everything in the cube system namespace has static pods. But this one, you don't see anything. You only see cube proxy here. Whereas the other components, API server, scheduler manager, controller manager, run as a process on the machine directly. They are not static pods. If I show you, if I log into one of the machine, and if I grab for... And you can see Kube API Server, Kube Scheduler, Kube Controller Manager, they're all running as system service. So that's why you don't see it in the Kube system namespace. So we have a cluster, multi-node cluster with one master, one worker node. What if you want to add additional worker nodes? So I'm gonna edit the same cluster configuration file. Let me copy this section and paste it. And the IP address of my third machine, which I haven't yet started, is going to be 172.16.16.103. And it's going to be a worker machine with the same private interface ETH1. Rest of the things are going to be the same. So now I need to bring up another virtual machine. So if I edit my vagrant file and set the node count to three, and do a vagrant up, the node is going to be Ubuntu BM3. Yeah, it's bringing up the, the third machine now. Let's wait for a minute. Right, we have our third machine and as usual, I need to do SSH copy ID 
password is admin and just quickly verify if I can log into it without the password yes I can and now all I need to do is KOSCTL apply command again and this time as I said it's not going to touch Ubuntu VM 1 or VM 2 which is already configured and it's just going to do uh, the third machine command completed so we don't have to do this KOSCTL cube config command again we can use our existing cube config file cube CDL get notes and now you see Ubuntu VM 3 ready cube ctl get force dash a and you see all these daemon sets running on two machines all right so we have seen how to add a new node but you can't do the opposite you can't remove a node you can remove it from this configuration file and if you apply it it's not going to reverse or if or it's not going to remove that from the cluster you have to do that manually okay let's do a cleanup now so we've done uh, the multi-node cluster configuration and we haven't actually looked at multi master in a highly available fashion maybe i'll do that in another video all right so if i have to reset this i just do KOSCTL reset and pass in the same configuration file confirm by pressing y and and it should reset all the machines. I'm using Vagrant. I can just do Vagrant destroy minus if I don't really care about these virtual machines. But if you want to reuse this virtual machine, uh, maybe you should log into each of these machines and then remove war lib kubelet. And then there will be KOS. If you want, you can remove that as well. User local bin KOS. And that shouldn't be warlib kos. That should have been deleted by the kosctl reset command. And the last thing to do is ip table stash l dash n. And it still has all these IP table rules created by KOSCTL. Um, if you restore, if you reboot this machine at this point, IP tables will get cleared when it comes back online. So in my case, I'm just going to do vagrant destroy minus f right i think that's it for this video i will see you all in another video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye